How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, and I wanted to talk to you today about the uh, a weird period in the world of amateur radio, one that we're kind of just really leaving. There's still some radios on the market, like this VX6, that have special uh, slots that you can drop in cards or actual circuit boards to unlock certain feature sets. And today we're gonna to be talking about a little quirky one. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so in the 90s, and actually predating the 90s, ham radios have often had little slots to drop in things like filters or Bluetooth modules or voice modules for like DTMF tones and all kinds of little things that initially the major brands didn't think people wanted that capability out of the box and they didn't want to increase the overall price for everyone. So they just had a little slot and if you wanted that capability, you just bought the card and you could slap it into the radio. Some went so far as to have full handheld accessories that would go along with the radios in question. And, and ones that jumped to my mind are the Yesu hand mic that had a Game Boy camera-esque camera in it uh, that you could take pictures of and send it over messaging, um, digital modes, you know, that kind of thing. That camera still exists, and um, it's it's kind of potato quality. Or my favorite was uh, the Kenwood D7. The predates this radio by uh, two radios. Actually had a uh, video communicator, and you could basically take images with it and send it out of the device and connect it to the Kenwood, and it would send it kind of like SSTV, another one of those interesting little modes that we don't really have that much of today. Another prime example, the Yesu 817, 818 have drop-in filter modules. Some are for single sideband voice, some are for Morse code CW. And the thought was, you know, at least Yesu's thought was, these, these filters are really expensive, so why not we just sell them as an add-on for the people who are really, really serious about it, but everybody else probably doesn't need it with our very kind of entry-level QRP radio. So the, the idea of slots has, has kind of moved on. The most recent radio I can think of in today's terms is probably the FTM 400 had a drop-in Bluetooth module. These are all still available. In fact, I'll drop some links for those that are watching. You can find out where you can get these modules or, or if these modules are actually interesting to you. Some are kind of quirky. Today, we're going to be looking at the VX6. The VX6 is, as far as time goes, an upgrade to the FT60. Uh, in a number of different ways. I put the FT60 here more just to show the size comparison. The, F the VX6 is still available today, but it is kind of of an older era within ham radio. This FT60 is actually my first radio, and I, I can't believe that it's maintained uh, <laughs> quality. I, I was actually very nice to this radio. I, I must have really liked it. Well, I still do. That's why I haven't gotten rid of it. But the VX6 is a new radio to me, but of this older generation, and it has a drop-in slot and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today because I have the SU1 barometer unit. It also has an altimeter I understand so we're going to experience this for the first time together but how this works and it's, it's actually quite ingenious. I'm going to disconnect my antenna for now. How this works is you pop the battery off and there's this little sticky tape thing. That's actually a cover, and you can almost see it as I'm pushing on it, for this slot. So let me get some tweezers, and we'll pry it up. And there it is. Look at that. This is a submersible radio, and the fact that you just have a pathway, relatively large pathway, directly to the board of the radio is a little scary, frightening. I don't know. But anyway, this SU-1 I picked up at Ham Radio Outlet today. It was, I don't know, 36 bucks or something like that. So I believe, if I'm doing this correctly, there's really only one way to do this. This pin lines up with this socket. We kind of go in. Fairly um, solid click feeling I got in my fingers as I did that. Now, I, I could reuse my sticky. In fact, I, I probably will, but just for the sake of you knowing, uh, it does actually come with another sticky in the box, but we'll, we'll, we'll just reuse this one for now. If I need to, I'll replace it. But let's put the sticky back on. 
Okay. There we go. Now, how do we use this? I don't know. There's no instructions that came in this box. <laughs> so let's turn it on and see what happens. Plug in antenna and just it starts randomly transmitting. I don't know what to expect here. Okay. We have entered uh, standard view. This is just memory mode. I actually don't know how to use this. Let's consult the internet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Indeed, there is a manual for it, and I have I have found it online. So here's what we need to do. We need to press we need to press the F W key and enter set mode. Okay, so. We're going to roll to item 65 is temp. <laughs> there you go. So I had to go into the special menu and actually select temp, hit zero, and now it is displaying the temp, which I guess it's 84.2 degrees uh, here in the shack. Or maybe it's just a byproduct of my holding it. I don't know, but let's let's find out where that barometric pressure is. So we go back to zero, FW zero, and instead of 65, we're gonna go to 64, hit zero, and we're gonna go to Barrow, hit zero. Oh, wow. Okay, let's do this again, because I, I, I think I got it. We're gonna go down to 64, hit zero, and I can I can change what I want it to display barometer, altimeter, or off. So I'm gonna go to barometer. Yeah, let's go with barometer and hit zero. And then I PTT. So it takes me back to the memory view. And if we wait five seconds, there you go. That is uh, that is what the barometric pressure reading is on this uh, right now, which is, okay. Let's check the altimeter. So I'll go back in, zero, go into there. Change this to ALT, zero, PTT, and we wait five seconds. I am 134 feet above sea level. <laughs> so fun, all right. So as uh, mentioned early in the video, you can find this module at Ham Radio Outlet, I think has it the cheapest. I looked at DX Engineering and gigaparts, and it's possibly because I just picked mine up in will call that uh, that's why it was like 35 bucks. How valuable is it to have this capability? I don't know. I sometimes will wear a Casio range man, which is a pretty expensive watch that does altimeter barometric pressure, a uh, number of other sensors that it has on it as well as having a solar power for charging and atomic clock. So does this replace that? And I just need to carry my my VX6? Hey, maybe. In some cases, that's really important depending on where you're at. So I don't know. You tell me in the comments what you think. Is this a pretty cool little thing? And tick the link in the description. None of it's affiliated to me to the different companies that, that still sell the actual drop-ins for other devices. And, and yeah, if you're already looking down in the description, you might as well also check out our Amazon store and some of the other affiliates that we have to help out this channel. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I'm linking you to a couple other videos that you might find interesting in this whole world of HTs and how to use them. So until I talk to you again, 73.